Welcome to Toffee TV. Now we've been asking people at home for loads of questions to get them into us to get some get something going, get some conversation going. Uh, this one I've seen pop up a few times and we've had a couple of videos in, so let's just hear from the lads. G'day Baz and Ped and the rest of Toffee TV. Hope everyone's staying safe. Um, just here in Sydney at the moment. Um, just chilling with the mates in isolation. I know how much you guys love a flaming galah. So, um, my question slash debate for you guys would be, what would be your best Everton 11 uh, using only one uh, player from each country from former Everton players, obviously. Um, I know that Tim Cahill would definitely be uh, getting in mind. Cheers, guys. Hope you're all well and staying safe. Hi, guys. I saw Paddy Boyle on tweet the other day about making an Everton 11 of players he's seen where you're only allowed one player from each country. Um, so, if you guys, I'd imagine Southall, um, Arteta, Lukaku might be nailed on, but I just wondered what your thoughts were. Cheers. Cheers to Ben and Ruse there. Yes, it is. It is the debate and it is the best ESC International 11. But one player from one country per position. Mm. And we have to have seen them. We have to have seen them in the flesh as well. So, um, because, it, listen, a lot of people have, di this is what makes it a great debate, is a lot of people have seen, will have seen different players in their lifetimes. Um, but we can only really talk about the players we have seen. Mm. So what we're going to do is we've got a couple of whiteboards and one by one. We're High gonna, tech, yeah. Yeah. There might be some graphics on the screen, but you, there might be. Well, uh, might, who knows? Who knows? I mean, you know, because you'll be doing that. Depends on how much. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Should we get into it? Let's get into it. So, let's before we start, let's just say as well, this is not as straightforward as it sounds. No. Because, number one, you cannot shoe on players into your team. You can't shoe yeah. on them in. They have to play in the positions or, you know, you've got to be able to justify them being in that position. Yeah. So you've got to think about it. We're both playing 4-4-2. Four, 4-4. Four, four. It's got to be a right back, a left back, two mm. centre backs, mm. centre midfielders, left and right, and two forwards. So unless you, you're playing something different, you could be playing 4-3-3. Three, three. Mm. We've, we've just gone 4-4-2 four, four, because we think it's just more practical. Mm. Um, so it is difficult because you have to try and squeeze these players in I'm interested to see who you've gone for because we know that it's going to be there's going to be variations there is and there's going to be players that are left out simply because you've chosen someone else you've chosen position. someone else or there might be some for some positions position. it might just be because you can't really think of anyone else to play in that position and you don't mm. want to weaken your entire team that's the other thing you could go oh, I'm just throwing so and so at, yeah. at, you know, I'm just throwing Yars Jakobsen at left back, or uh, sorry, right back, because he's a, and that means I can play someone else. Mm. But then that weakens your team. Weaken. It's about the over, overall strength. Right, let's get into it. Let's, let's get into the goalkeeper situation. I'm writing it down right now. Don't mind. Don't. I don't want to see yours. I don't want to see yours. Done. Okay. Right. Three, two, one. South four. Neville Southall. Neville Southall. Neville Southall. So, there's our Welsh pick gone yeah, straight gone away. Immediately. Why have you gone for Nev? Quite simply, the best goalkeeper I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and that was my starting thing. Because, like you said, he could he could put people in and go, well, we'll play uh, Eddie Bosna. Not that he couldn't because he's Australian and there's better Australians. But you're trying to like get yeah. people from any country. You know, I want playing. Robert Fatsch here because mm. he's Polish and, and he's better you know but you're not playing him in goal are you? no but I'm just saying so So you, I am with my team I'm trying to think of the of the best players as well yeah not just the national in the key positions and so he is the best goalie I I still think he was the best goalkeeper yeah, that I've ever seen I've gone for that because number one he's the best goalkeeper when I want to start strong from the back mm. I don't want to mess about and then when I look at the other Welsh players Kevin Ratcliffe mm. You know, you could have him in the team very easily. Oh, notable absentee. Definitely sure. notable absentee. But and you look at it and think, could anyone else? It, was anyone almost as good as Kevin Ratcliffe? Yeah, I think other people were almost as good as Kevin Ratcliffe. Some mm. people were better than Kevin Ratcliffe. Yeah, you know, Kevin Ratcliffe's not the best centre back who ever played for Everton. No, fantastic. But you know, but a good player, good mm. captain, good mm. pace. So, um, 
So Neville Southall, yeah. I don't think there's any argument. No, I don't think there is. But why. other people might have to shoe on or might look at other positions because mm. they want. Because you know, you look at it, you might say, well, if you're looking for 85 purely, you've got mm. him, you've got Ratcliffe, no, no, and you've no. got Pat Van der Nau, right? Yeah. So there's three Welsh players from our best ever team. Mm. Um, tacked on to that, you've got a Gary Speed, which yeah. for some people in their gen, oh, they, God, they yeah, might love yeah. Gary Speed, Speed as, you know, as as their player. Um, any other Welsh players you can... Mark Pembridge, I mean, you know. He's the one that really I struggled with, whether yeah. he, it was him or Nev, to be honest with you. Pems mm. or Nev. Mark Hughes, of course, you could of course. have us. Other Welsh legend. Why wouldn't you? But he's, the fact that I think he's a shite off and probably one of the few Everton players I don't like, except mm. players. Um, so he was never getting there. Okay, well, let's move on. Yeah. Let's go yeah, to yeah. right back. Let's go to right back. Right back. This is going to be really interesting. Okay. Three, two, one. Seamus Coleman. <laughs> Seamus Coleman. Now, right. Seamus Coleman is into. Now, obviously, there goes our Irish pick, and this was a tough one mm. because Kevin Sheedy, by right, should be in any Everton side. Yeah. Any Everton side. Mm. The problem for me was there aren't enough good right backs. I've not seen enough good right backs at Everton. Obviously, Gary, Gary Stevens, Stevens is the best I've seen. But I wanted my English pick to be someone else who was the. Yeah. Who, it, so there was Gary Stevens gone out the door. And Tony Ibbett's English. Ibbett's English. Bill Barrett's uh, English. Yeah. Matt Phil Jackson's Neville. English. Phil Neville's English. And then you're looking at what? Lars Jakobsen. That's no, what I'm saying. No, Cucumber You don't, don't want to don't don't weaken the side. No, because no, you're him. trying to pick. You're trying to pick. A, a good side mm-hmm. as well. Like I said, I've told me before, because I had Cucumber Martini, you know, plays for Curacao. No one mm-hmm. else. There's no other Curacao player, so either got in. But given the fact that mm. he's it will be in my worst ever. Mm. Eleven, I don't want to say it too loud, but you know, he's not someone I rate highly, let's put it that way, as a right back. So there again, we cut down on, you know, um you know, Mark Hottiger, Swiss, but mm. nowhere no. near the level I'd want uh, so I'm because I am trying to pick it as I am trying a to pick a very team, strong team. A good team. And Seamus Coleman's been brilliant for Everton. Okay, we're at a stage now where I mean Jibble Sidderby wasn't getting in. Either no, and he, he doesn't qualify for me because he's it's, as good as he is going forward. He hasn't been here long enough as well, and he can't defend. Um, so Coleman was really once Gary Stevens was ruled out for me. Coleman was really the only pick, and it was a tough one it because was. of Kevin Sheedy. It was Kevin Sheedy was like I was thinking the best left footer player I've ever seen. You know, yeah. play for Everton. Like that's the because the way I approached it was, I, I almost took the best players first, put them in the team, and then started to build from there. But mm-hmm. then some of Sheedy was one of those players, he was straight in there. Yeah. But then once I started to build out and think about other p- players who could possibly play there instead. Sheedy is, uh, it is that, it's that. It's looking at that left and going, right, as good as he is, and I know he is, and I'll say it again, he's the best left-sided yeah. player I've ever seen play for Everton. His left foot was just ridiculous. What's incredible so far? It's making me think like... You've, you've said so far... That two of the best players in the position you've ever seen play for Everton are not in your team no. because you think there's other players who are from that country who are better than those two players. That's quite interesting. That's I, quite. I, I'm starting Coleman to, isn't better than Sheedy. No, right? no, but I'm but starting I'm to think to, that. I'm starting, to maintain. I'm, start, I'm starting to think that you now regret not putting Steve, Gary Stevens in and Kevin Sheedy in the team. I think. That, I think you're starting. I to get think that. that is a fair comment. There's a speed of sweat just pulling down your head. Where you if that's a fair that comment, but the problem is, yeah, you'll see as we go <laughs> okay. forward. Okay. No, I mean, to be honest, Sheedy was the hardest one for me mm. to leave out, was okay. because he's, he was incredible. And therefore, by Coleman's in, because A, he's been the second best right back I've seen play for Everton, to be fair. Um, he's been consistent, but he's also out of a good quality level, that where there's, there was no other one I felt wouldn't weaken my team who mm. who would come in instead of him. So if it was Gary Stevens then I'd lose the person I want him mm. somewhere else in the team. But Gary Stevens would get in ordinarily. But if it wasn't Seamus Coleman, the anyone else who played there for me would consider yeah. be weaken my team. So that's why I went okay. for Seamus Coleman. Okay. I mean you you must be think you you must be thinking similar. No of course it is. That's what's so what's so interesting about this is that you think I'm well 
are those two other players better or could I have gone and thought, you know, could I have just gone for another... The problem with right-back is, is because there's such a drop-off from... from to, Gary Stevens is first. Mm. Seamus is second. But then there's such a drop-off then. And because all those other players are, are mostly English anyway, yeah, yeah. and the drop-off to the next non-English player is so big that it, it can't it can't really be anyone else but Gary Stevens or Coleman. Mm. Coleman. And yeah, then you've yeah. got to think... Is your English player better than Gary Gary Stevens? Mm. More important, I would say, for me, for the okay. way I set my team up. Okay. That's why. That's how I've done mine. Okay. Okay, then. Left, Left back. Left back. Okay. This is going Bosch to be... B-O-S-N, <laughs> isn't it? Okay. I'm I'm excited. Well, not excited, but okay. I'm intrigued. That's who you put here. Okay. Three, two, one. Oof. I've used my English player up. You have. I've gone with Luca Dean. I've gone with Leighton Baines. Yeah. Now I, I had yeah. I had Dean in my team, and then, but now I'm starting to question that because I'm thinking about something about the the other player I've picked. I'm thinking about whether the other French player I've picked even qualify even qualifies for France. Okay. Um but no, like listen, like, I was thinking about the English player and I was thinking and there's a long list of English players I could put in the side. Mm. But when I I just thought Leighton Baines is brilliant. Yeah. He's been brilliant for years and yeah, years yeah. and years. He's one of the he's just he's he's the best Everton left back I've ever seen. Um I'd agree. And and I just for me it was just one of those positions where I was like Think about the best English player. Think about the best... And there's a lot... Listen, there'll be loads and I'll, I'll be very intrigued to see yours. And I, I I think I know who it is. But, for me, I just thought... If I was going to put an, an English player in, I just thought Baines is the player for me. I want mm. Baines in this team. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there'll be enough balance elsewhere. Okay. Um, and Dean's great because we haven't had loads of French players. Mm. So... And my French player might even be a French player. But that's not the point. The point being is, is that, is that, um, you know, that's why I think. Nick Almada was French. He, he, he well, he was. Very no, well, French. I went for, listen, Leighton Baines is probably the best left back I've ever seen, quality wise, actual football and mm. ability. But Pat Van der Nau was was a monster. And as a defender, he was better than Baines, as a defender. Mm. And he was good going mm. forward, Pat, but he wasn't at Baines' level. Baines is a footballer, incredible, absolutely incredible, still doing it now. And don't forget, Pat was over a short period yeah. of time as well, really. Um, but Baines has been, the, and it sounds odd saying it again, because Baines is the best, probably the best football and left back I've ever seen play for Everton. Mm. One of my all time favourite Everton players. And I generally have attackers as my favourite yeah. because I was a forward, so I look, they excite me more. Um, but I do love Leighton Baines, and he mm. kind of booked the trend of being a fullback who I absolutely loved. I mean, I've liked players, but Baines is him like like I say, him probably top five or six Everton mm. players that I've loved. Um, and it was a difficult one, but again, by virtue of how my squad played out, how my team plays out, I want to be Englishman because I think he's key to the works. Dean is a fantastic footballer and brilliant. Okay, he's dipped this season, but I, I think it's everything else yeah. that's gone on around him has made. Yeah that's made him suffer this season and again French players we've not had many no. Mikhail Mazar and you know um, obviously we've got Sidderby now and, and so that gave me a you know Kurt Zuma was another one but he's not our player so I didn't include anyone mm. on loan so therefore for me it was deemed was an easy one because it made me accept that Baines he wasn't in it because I've got this other player yeah, and that's, but that's, Baines is a fantastic that's player the, the beauty of this is the beauty of this whole thing is is that no one can really be wrong. I no, don't think. Everyone's just got an opinion. Everyone's it? got an opinion. It's just how it all fits together. Mm. Um, I'm doing it is not... There'll be some people who probably try to choose the best ever player in that position, mm. and that's fine. But I'm trying to do it as if I had to yeah. pick a team that it I think I've balanced. It won't work if you do it like that. Well. Right, let's go to the first centre-back. Mm. <laughs> this is going to be... This is... this is If, if, I, if my team is... is one that might have people scratching their heads, it's these two positions. Okay. So one just do one of them. Yeah, I am, I'm doing one. Okay. Okay. Right. 
Okay. 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 Three, two, one. <laughs> Matarati and I have gone for Johnny Heitinger. Good player, Heitinger. Yeah. Good player. Marco Matarati, I'll start. Go on. World Cup winning. Yeah. Centre back. Fabulous when he left Everton. He was good for Everton, mm. bit ill disciplined, good player. Um, but again, by virtue of us not having many great Italian players. You know, I, I'd looked at Matteo Ferrari, who I thought was a brilliant centre back for Everton, but more used to, you know, was in and out, wasn't he? Um, but Matarati for everything else mm. that he grew into. Now, people might look and go, well, he's only here a year. And, be, and, and I get that and I accept that. Yeah. So that could be a reason why he probably shouldn't be in. But I just think for what he was, left side of centre back as well, left footed, World Cup winner, brilliant. And I just think he, he he would get in my team. No, he was a great player. Honestly, he was a great player. And he was coming towards the end of... He was adapting to yeah, play, was, yeah. playing. And we sold him at the wrong time. He didn't even want to leave when we sold him. He wanted to stay. But again... No, but he, he, he didn't. He um, was getting better and better. Yeah, he was, and yeah. it was just a financial thing where we just mm -hmm. had to get off players off the books who were, you know, after... Three kicks as well scored. It was a great bit we seen him. We had that horrible after he left Everton he had a horrible nastiness about mm -hmm. him um, that we and we were seeing that when he was at Everton because he got sent off quite a bit but um, so I went with him well jo listen Johnny Heitinger Dutch obviously mm -hmm. um, not too many of them Absolutely. when we signed him we were all told he was going to be a right back he played one game at right back and was terrible um, yeah. against Portsmouth although he did set the goal up he did he? just played long ball mm -hmm. we all he set it up he hit a long ball to so hard um, and for me he got played the year, didn't he? Yeah. Second season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I always found it mad that we never played three at the back. We almost had the three perfect players. Him yeah. on the ball. Got the five perfect yeah, players. Yeah, five perfect. Him on the ball, Jagielka as a, as a defender, mm. and this time with the cover and pace. Mm. We had Baines and Coleman on either side. If Moyes had just thought about coming away from playing that one up front, mm. that could have been the perfect formation. Yeah. We, had players, we had players at that time. That were better than mm. our system, if that yeah. made sense. If he would have just altered the system to suit the mm. players, a good man, a, a, a different manager, because yeah. Moyes was a good manager, a different manager would have just moved the pieces around a little bit mm. and probably got Everton a bit more success because mm. then five at the back. I think he suffered from the fact that he was a little bit smaller mm. than the other two, and Moyes loved Jags clearly because yeah. Jags was a great defender, yeah, yeah. and he, and Distan had great cover and pace. Mm. And 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 you know that's what he loved. He got that partnership going for at that time. Yeah. And Heitinger found himself the odd man out. Mm. Sometimes he played midfield. He wasn't as good. Um, he was sometimes accused of being not as committed, maybe in the tackle at times. But mm. he's come out since and said he loved his time at Everton. And, I liked. And I quite liked Johnny Heitinger. I think it, it was one of them. It was almost like the way it tailed off, leaved you t towards the end with like you know a, a sour taste in your mouth. Mm. But when you look back and you think about that. It's just that he never kept up the standards, and that's because he wasn't in the team. Mm. So you can understand it from his point of view. But I always thought that Moyes just got it wrong. It was a perfect three. It was. And um, he got listen. He got played this season, and he deserved it. He, he was brilliant. He was at times. He, he, was really was. he was a classy player. He was, yeah. Really classy player. And he and he maybe just wrong place at the wrong time, or or right place just mm. maybe at the wrong time. Mm. But listen, great defender. Just never quite worked out for him. Mm. Never, but. But, but he's gone into my team because he's he's a good player and he's Dutch. Yeah, fair, so, enough. fair enough. Let's go for the other Fair enough. Oh, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. I mean, you say interesting. You say hilarious, okay. but... Okay, three, two, one. Mina. And I've gone for Sylvain Distan. The French. French. Maybe French. Yes, we play, we play for France. Did he play for France? Because did didn't he play some games for the one um, Kuko Martina plays for as well? But did, no, he definitely played for well, France. Right, well, he's my French pick anyway. He's French. He's French. That's what I thought anyway. So he's French. Uh, Mina, yes. Colombian. Colombian. Yeah, fair play. <laughs> Again, by virtue of having to balance the team. Yeah. Uh, I think Yeri Mina is a, he's a good defender. Uh, I think in a team like this, it, the team is stronger elsewhere mm. I'll get that the two centre backs mightn't be the strongest two but I think defensively they're both good and just not the quickest I'd probably have to sit deep but um, but Yerry Mina I think good defender powerful good in the air 
good in the tackle. I think he's he's been good this season, really has. Um, and he's been good in a team that has a lost the best screener we had in Ghana, mm. and has been up and down and changed manager and been all over the place. And throughout that, in general, I think Mean has been good the whole way through. I think he's a good defender, and the fact that he's Colombian which might have been a big a big indicator into why he got into my side. So I mean, I'm looking like the Dutch thing, mm. it could have been a shout, but. Mm. So I've gone with Mina. No, listen, I've gone with no Yerald. right or wrong answers. Big Yerald, I've gone with. This time for me, come in, a little bit shaky at first, but once he settled in, was absolutely fantastic. Mm. Uh, you know, he's made mistakes, he always held his hands up, he was, a, he was a man about the situation. Mm. Um, Moe well, said he brought him in for two to three years, that was mm. the plan when we got him. Yeah. And he came in in 09, yeah. and he said he was that good, we had to just keep extending his contract because yeah. he was that good. Moyes left in 13, and he played for us till six. Till mm. 15, so another couple of years. And so. again, he's another player who suffered from a manager having ideas about things that maybe didn't quite didn't, w- didn't quite work. You know, he wanted them playing on the ball at the back. It didn't. And then he went to another manager who wanted to do the same mm. at Bournemouth. Yeah. In the end, and it cost him. Whereas if he'd have been, well, I was I was watching. Funny enough, I was watching. Um, they were showing the uh, BBC was showing like FA Cup highlights, and they were showing Portland versus Manchester United, Old Trafford. It's the Portland playing on money. Oh yeah, yeah. And him and Sol Campbell at the back were absolutely magnificent, and it just shows you that in that watching that how good the defender was and how he could read the game. And as I said, when he first came into Everton, struggled at first, made the odd mistake. Um, well, he just wasn't Lescott, was he? No, so people no, were on his back a little exactly. Bit. And he had a lot to get over because he mm-hmm. wasn't Lescott. Lescott was scoring the goals and everything. But he, he settled in and just become a magnificent defender. And unfortunately, Martinez hung him out to dry towards the end. But I think the fans backed him. And in that again, that sort of when that happened, people started to ask questions of Martinez rather than ask questions of Distan. Because yeah. Distan always maintained We always he, fronted it up, didn't yeah. he? He was always he was he always mats, honest and, about yeah, it. And yeah, was, you know, he got a chance to go to West Ham and yeah. everyone, you know, everyone thought it would be a great idea because we want to see him play. Martinez wouldn't let him mm. and you know all little things like that, but while at the time as Evan, he was he was as good as he was as good as um, anyone really for just you know the covering defender. Was great. He was brilliant this time. All oh, right, like any centre back, I don't think any centre back perfect. No, I really don't. Jags had his moments, but I still love Jags. Kevin Ratcliffe was had his moments, and at the end he was a liability, but we still look back and go, what a player. Mm-hmm. What a play, you know. Degsy will say he had his moments. Dave Watson certainly had his moments. All the all the top Everton centre backs yeah. who you've seen over the years. The, it's the position they play, yeah. isn't it? It's gone out then. But yeah. this time was fantastic. Five million quid, absolutely incredible for us. Six mm. years, service, mm. brilliant, absolutely. But again, French and I'd already had Luca. So. Yeah, yeah. Because he would have been. He was one I was looking at yeah. and going. I'd have loved him in my team. Okay, there you go. Right, let's move on to. Right side, right, right, right side of midfield, right, or right wing, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. Three, Eight. two, one. Yeah, the Russian Andre Kinchelskis. Andre Kinchelskis. There's nobody else. No, there's nobody else who he, could. We get him by two two things. One, we've got no other Ukrainians or Russian players of any note. Um, Billy but, Lepin, but yeah. But, I've any notes. Like I said, I've any notes. I, I mean, I like Billy, scorer of great goals. Um, but he was he truly one of the world-class players that Everton mm. have had over the last 30 years. He was just incredible. He was amazing. He was on his own. He was amazing. Power, he's, he's, the, he's, the best, he's the best Everton player I've ever seen. Is he? I think. I think he is. I, well, I think because it's me, I'm saying. Yeah, of course. Um, because when he got the ball, you were just on the edge of your seat mm. and you felt like whatever happens um, something would happen yeah. Like, and don't forget he missed the first part of the season when he first signed due to an injury that he got picked up on his third game against Man United mm. and then the second half of the season he was just utterly incredible yeah, just... drove us forward um, to, uh, f- to, to f- you know, where did we finish six does it Um but you think if we'd had him first half of the oh, season with some other players, considering um, he got sixteen goals, yeah. and if we'd been in it. Europe as well, I think, you know, and he he just he, he's just incredible. He was just, mm. and he was, and also he 
it was the first time we bought a world class player in his peak as well. Yeah. Like, like it was properly, yeah, he was properly unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And I rem- I've said this story before. I remember, and this is how times have changed. I remember seven o'clock every night while the thing was going on because we basically signed them, and then there was this problem, wasn't there? There was a payment that needed to be paid, and mm. Man United wouldn't pay it, and we wouldn't pay it, and was he coming? And it was like being an Everton. I remember every night going out to me that to my dad's car and switching on Radio Merseyside at 7 o'clock news because they'd always have like the sports, the sports update, and yeah. that would be it that was it that was during when you found out anything I mean how mad is that now how mad that was like that was <laughs> 1995 how mad is that to think 25 years ago you get your news at 7 o'clock Mike Hughes would be like an Everton today and it was like there's no further nothing further on with Conchelskis and that was all you got for about three days in a row and it was just like oh my god because we were signing this absolutely world class player and it felt like, because we'd just come off winning the cup, it felt like there was a real change. And I remember being at Sheffield Wednesday that day. Oh, my God. It was unbelievable. That, oh, that kit, all white. Oh, it was unbelievable. He was incredible. Oh, he was just, every time he got the ball, something happened. Yeah. And uh, loved that shift where he come inside and bend it in, or just blast him yeah. with his left foot as well. He was just, he was world class. He really was. He's... You know, you'd, you'd have to flick a coin with him and Trevor Stevens to get it in the mm-hmm. 85. Because Trevor Stevens was incredible as well. There he was. But he was a, he was an unbelievable. But he's a wide striker. Mm-hmm. In fact, in a, to, in the way the game's gone nowadays, he, he was like the equivalent of a like a, a Raheem Sterling, yeah. a Mo, a Mo Salah, yeah, yeah. them kind of, you know, Liverpool for Barcelona. You think of like Messi coming off the wing or. You know, Su- you know, Suarez plays centre, but Neymar from them wide areas getting that amount of goals. Because the irony is now, if he played, if he played now and he played for us, we'd be fending off your Barcelona, your Everyone. Real Madrid for him. But, but he ended up going to Fiorentina. It was a, it was a terrible it's a different move. time, no, wasn't it? No, I know. But we had them in here, didn't he? Said he didn't want to go. No, he said he didn't want to go. But it was a terrible move. Oh, it was when you think about it, Florentine, he like as I said, now now he would be going to any club in the world because yeah, yeah, yeah. off the back of scoring sixteen goals in the Premier League, they'd, they'd be queuing up and they'd be paying mad mad money. He was. The he Premier went for buttons. He was in his infancy, though. No, I know. Although he'd been brilliant when United won the league. Yeah. He'd been un- unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. What a player! Okay, let's go, let's go to left side. The of left field. side. Okay, this will be interesting. This, will be interesting. this is going to be very, very interesting. Me thinks. So Billy Elektanov, because well, he's can, Russian. No, you can't have that. Oh, okay. Right, three, two, one. With Charles and I have gone for Pina. You've gone very modern there. You've gone for it though. Pina is actually on my bench. Okay. So I've got a bench. I love you know what I how I feel about Stephen Pina. Mm. Absolutely love him. But I just think that Charleston is one of the best players I think we've had in the last thirty years. Mm. With in terms of ceiling as yeah. well, where he could go. Can play anywhere across the, the, the fronts. Goals. Pina didn't get a lot of goals, but created an awful lot. And this was a, a this was really one where I undernard and got mm. no Pina's in. But I just think that Charleston's brilliant. I, I just think everything about him. He's like Pina with that work rate. Yeah. That never say die. But he's got the goals that Pina yeah, yeah. didn't get. Okay, he doesn't create as many. And that was that's what shaded it for me was simply the fact of the goals. And then I. I what I did do was I had Stephen Pina in one of my central midfield positions, yeah. and I was like, nah, because I'm I am shoehorning him in because yeah. we're playing a four four two. It's like trying to play a Wobie in. Much, he's oh, he was better than a Wobie, but trying to play someone who wouldn't play normal mm. normally in that centre position. Yeah. So I went with Richarlison, but you know how I feel about Stephen Pina. I mean, that's I mean, I do feel like you've slightly shoehorned him, but. Um, a few on the Charles, just in a four-four-two, yeah. But, but he played on the it's left. It's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. He played on it's the fine. left. I'll let you have it. Come on. Um, listen, Sheedy would be my number one for mm. left midfield. Of course he would. But with the balance of the side and having, mm. as we've already explained, I couldn't really f- think of many other players I'd want out on left midfield mm. than Stephen Pina. Um, incredible player. Uh, incredible technique. Okay, didn't yeah. score a lot of goals, but him and Baines. And ironically, him and Baines are in the side. Had they partnership, which is just yeah, yeah. Never, I've never seen the likes of it um, at Everton. 
Mm. And I know Trevor Stephen and Gary Stevens had some had a very similar thing, but it, it, the amount of goals they created, yeah. and again, like you've mentioned, Pinar's work rate was fantastic. He could play in centre midfield. Um, he had, obviously had two spells at the club. Um, he was just a fantastic player, yeah. fantastic right. player. And okay, he went and tried his hand somewhere else, and it never quite worked because again, I think him and Baines were such had such a t- tremendous connection. Baines got all the assists, but it was Pinar who was always putting Baines in the position to get the assists. He didn't really want to leave. That, that's no, the thing. Listen, that's why I think the Spurs thing didn't really work no. out as well. And I listen. And they don't. You didn't know how to use. Them. They didn't know how to use him. They didn't know. They basically put him in the same position and and totally forgot that. There was someone else. Someone else had to play. It. And the same thing happened when Baines played for England at left back. Mm. They played him at left back and then wondered why. He wasn't getting up the pitch because he, he didn't have to foil someone coming in front of him. Yeah. He, he wouldn't do the way. So they were a brilliant partnership. And listen, they, people that have different opinions, people go, I'm having Sheedy straight in and everything yeah, else. Of Forget. Sheedy, That's yeah. fine. We're trying to get a balanced side. But mm. just for me, um, you know, I, I loved watching him. And I, yeah. I just thought he, he's a fantastic fella as well, being very lucky to, to meet him as well. I mean, he was very lucky to witness me score a hat trick at Goodison as well, which he actually said was the finest hat trick he'd ever seen at Goodison. Um, I mean, he wasn't set up to say that, but... He, but he wasn't, he to. just set it off his own back. Well, yeah. Um, no? So, yeah, I've got Yeah, fantastic Pina. player. Again, uh, it's one that I can't, I'm not going to argue yeah. because he's... he's you know he's one. He is one of my favourite players. I think he's, he was incredible for Everton. F- unbelievable footballer, really. Um, but I've just gone because of the goals. I just went with Litty. Okay. But it was a, it was a, a tough one. This next one's going to be really interesting because you'll know it's a tough one in a minute. So go this on. one's really interesting because I'm actually leaving out a very very. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm okay. not going to say any more. All right. I'm not going to say any more. Okay, three, yeah. two, one. I knew that was going to be your English player. I knew Peter Reid would be your Quite English player. Quite simply, best midfield I have ever yeah. seen play forever. I've gone for Garner. Um, okay, good player. I've gone for Garner because... And initially, I wasn't even thinking about Garner. I was thinking about somebody else. Mm. But, Interesting. but when you, just, just for the balance of the side... Mm. Um, and I kind of maybe overthought this because I have gone for the balance of the side. I just thought his what he what he what he done in his three years, yeah, and certainly in his last five months, he became certainly in the last five months he elevated himself to mm. almost world class maybe in his position. Yeah, maybe, maybe, and that's why Palace Saint Germain took him. Um, but straight away when we first signed him, we straight away what we saw was just play who could basically run a midfield on his own. Mm. And you know, it was like two men in there, and we've seen the difference this season with him not being in there. Oh, uh, the yeah. drop offs can be incredible. The full backs aren't get aren't as good going forward. Um, you know, it, it, he just he, he was like two p- people. He never very rarely fouled anyone. Mm. He just had a great way of getting in and nicking the ball and then setting us up for the counter attack. And we saw that late on in the season, especially at home. Mm. How much that helped? Great attitude, great work rate. You know, still, you know, went up, left, left in almost on good terms as well. Mm. Fans would understood that that you know this was the time. Okay, maybe not everyone agreed with it, or maybe people thought we should have got more for him. But and um, he'd put he put a good shift in when he did. When he had, we knew that he yeah. wanted to go. We were still we asked him to stay for to the end of the season. He obviously knew that probably Paris had come back from which they did, and um, it was really close between him and another player. Um, and the other players arguably are probably a better player or is more idolised by Evertonians but okay. I just felt like he was the right player for the team ok sound good go on Peter Reid Peter Reid quite simply the best midfielder I've ever seen play for us talking of all the things you're talking about Garner mm. he did that but was, was better going forward Yeah, score goals not, not a lot admittedly but he come up with big goals Nasty, rally the team leader. If you needed someone to go and win, set the tempo, it was him. Mm. Um, didn't back down from anyone. Looked after teammates. You seen that with the age and he thing and and all of that. Just an unbelievable character. Will to win seconds and on. Just a fantastic midfielder. If Everton had one now like him, he'd be we'd be in the top three, top yeah. four because he was that good. 
Ghana was wonderful, absolutely brilliant, and didn't get in my team for the simple reason that very similar to Reed, and I wanted a bit of balance. And you want the ass in. Exactly. Um, but you want that little bit of balance. But he was, Reed was just unbelievable. Mm. And him and Bracewell were probably the finest midfield partnership I've ever seen play mm. for Everton. And we've had some good sense of No, we have. we have. We've had some but top. He was, Reed was just. No, I, I was thinking about Reed as well. Um, I was thinking about Reed. Turn a whole club around. Yeah, oh, listen, Reed was. I was thinking about Reed, but it was just a case of. To get, to get in that balance of the side. And it's weird that I've left out Reed and I've left out. Um, like Sheedy and mm. stuff, but it was just about getting that balance of the team. And I just. When I looked at it, and the centre backs, and I possibly could have had them in there um, if I'd had Dean at left back, maybe, which yeah, yeah. could have could have done then that. Couldn't have had this then. No, no. So but it's all about that. And then I could have had, but then I could have had, I could have had, you know, you've you've picked two centre backs there, mm. which which I could have had. It's just about the balance of the centre. No, Reed's amazing. Yeah, what a player! Amazing. What a player! Very underestimated by a lot by a lot. Like people who probably never seen him. I think yeah. anyone who who watched them would yeah. understand. Just he. he Andy Gray gets a lot of plaudits and rightly so yeah. for what he done. But Peter Reid actually transformed Everton Football Club yeah. from a team that was struggling and you know threatened with relegate or, or certainly the lower half to being the best team in Europe in a couple of years. And it was because of him, mm. because everybody fed off him. He set the tempo. The way we've seen Ghana do it, win us games because he'd be out and win that fair tackle. He done that for us for mm. years, and he, the trophies that followed because of him. And don't forget. PFA player of the day, writers player of the year and I've got it mm. as well one year but Reid was just unbelievable and he went into an England team and and got England to the quarterfinals mm. you know and if Lineker would have uh, I mean it'd have been a bit quicker he wouldn't have made it 2-0 mm. like, but if Lineker would have added that one in when Barnes crossed and he was a yard out you know we'd, England had probably gone on and won that game because mm. they, were, they were in the ascendancy and England's just transformed yeah. when Reid got in the team he was that good he was that good and Injuries, he come back and still be that good, you know. And, and we let him go because we start. We thought it was going to be new and shiny with like just Stuart McCall and Mike Milligan and that. And Reed was still better than the pair of them. Went to QP, went to City, was brilliant. Yeah. QPR was still good. Still had three or four years after Everton when he could have been doing that for Everton. Yeah, could have been leading those young, you know, lead, younger players. Yeah, exactly. You know, you should have had someone with Peter Reed. And, and again, really, but, really bad decision. By the football club. But, right, let's go to the other yeah. centre midfielder. For me, there's only one name. Interesting. See, that, see, I've gone for Tim Cale. Baz has gone for Michael Arteta. And Mich Michael Arteta was the player I left out. Okay. At first, I was going to go for Arteta and Cale in centre midfield, and um, and a lot of people probably think that should be that would be more like it. But why have you why have you gone for Arteta? Well, this shows you how much I agonised over Pina, but then went for balance because. Like I feel as though you've gone for, you've shoe on Kale in. No, I haven't. I feel like you have. No, I haven't. He's not a centre midfield player. But Arteta. Playing a diamond. Well, I could have played the diamond with Pina, well, but I, I wanted. Played, I have played. Oh, that's fine. I've gone for more balance. Um, I went for that the balance there, like you say. I've Kale's on my bench. Kale's again is one of. He's a player who I absolutely love. Really do love him. Um, and he's on the bench, and he's one who's unlucky not to be in the team when you look at it mm. because he was great. But Arteta, is, I don't you see, I don't like Arteta anywhere near as much as I like the likes of P and R and Kale. So that's why I'm talking, I'm thinking about the balance of it, and I think him with Reed would have been magnificent because mm. Reed would go and do everything, put the fires out, and then give the ball to Arteta. And Mikel Arteta was such a good footballer that he would that would be a lovely little balance in the centre of the park yeah. there. Um, Really great value for Everton, two and a half million quid. Come in, was with us for five years, okay, he was a shite talk by the end of it. But not well, he was. I mean, people have, have read it in history to, to be like, oh, you know, he didn't want to go. He was he wanted to go, he begged to go, um, which I can't forgive. I can't forgive someone saying to the club they're not leaving and then the next day say, I'm going today and you'll do it because, or I'm never playing for you again, I won't put up with you. I can't forgive that. And people will have their own opinion, and that's why I hope he gets sacked at Arsenal. But as a footballer, as a technique of a footballer, he was mm. fantastic for Everton Football Club, and um, 
and he goes in there because I think him and him and Reed would be brilliant because mm. Reed, like you say, Garner Reed could do the job of three men nearly in midfield. Yeah. But then too, I think it'd be a lovely little because Arteta worked hard as well. Mm. That was a good thing. Moyes put him in on the right hand side and said, "You've got to wait to play there. You've got mm. to play out here and work hard." And Arteta wasn't work shy. That's the one thing he wasn't as well. And that's why he was a good player because he he put the hard work in as well mm. as the technique. And I think him and Reed will make a lovely little partnership in the middle of the park. Kale's not natural sentiment for me. He's just not. He's a, he's a, a split striker, and Pienaar is more of a 10 if he's going to play inside so I, I did put PNR he was in my original one with Reed, but it was a bit like cheating not cheating but it was yeah. Hugh Warren and I didn't want to do yeah. it so, that, so that's why I went for the more traditional yeah well I mean Kale for me was one of the first names on the sheet yeah. it really was because he was just an incredible incredible footballer yeah. and for some people he is their he is their Everton legend mm -hmm. icon whatever you want to call it they're, mm -hmm. they're, he's the person that um they see when they think of Everton, for whether it be, you know, fans in the UK or fans in Australia have been brought to Everton because of him. Mm. He was just the man who turned up. He was the man. Yeah, he, he was. Man who turned up. Man who loved big games. Now, whether he, you call him a split striker, whether you, you know, you centre midfielder, whether he played in a five, um, you know, whether he played up front occasionally, he turned up mm. for games of football and loved playing against big opposition and scored goals against big opposition mm. and I don't think we've had anyone since who really no. who really who took the challenge who took it on and goes I'm going to match you today but I'm, I represent Everton Football Club mm. and he loved representing Everton Football Club and he left it all on the pitch and he never there was no you know when he left it was I'm leaving because I'm not good enough for Everton anymore really mm. yeah that's what it was yeah. you know it wasn't it wasn't anything else um, and it's just a sh real shame that more didn't come out of that team yeah, because it was just so close to being so, a yeah, good side so close to being a good side whether it be a better squad players coming off the bench mm. a different attitude there was just something something just not you know when you think about those players in isolation they're all good good players and we never could quite fit them all together and mm. it's so frustrating it is really frustrating that um, we didn't do more with that side so you know I just yeah. loved. I love Tim Kale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he still represents the club brilliantly. Mm -hmm. um, Great, Timmy. He's an Evertonian. It's as simple as that. He's yeah, I love. I love him. You know what I do. You know how I feel about him. But he's on my bench. Sad. Right. Let's move to yeah, yeah. the forward positions. Mm. The first forward position will be. Three, two, one. Graeme Shaw. Graeme Shaw. Graeme Shaw. It's yeah. Scottish pick, gone. Scottish pick. Um, goal scorer. Um, leader. Great target focal man. Focal point target man. Nasty. Scored goals. Most goals in the um, post-war post era mm. as well. Mm. Scored goals. Did it over a long time as well. Um, when people talk about Dominic Carvalho lewin they say, oh, there's shades of Graeme Sharp in there, you can you know you can see why. Mm. Um, and while the other partner changed, he was always that consistent, mm. consistent player for eight or nine years. Yeah, yeah. Um, loved like the little little and large partnership, and you know he could be nasty when he wanted to as well. Scorer of some worldies Gosh. as well. The Am one at Anfield and Tottenham at home and remember Leeds at home. Brilliant goals, brilliant target mm. man. Fantastic, fantastic play. So hang in the air. The leader, like you said, scored big goals. Come up when we needed them to. Um, cup Winners' Cup final, things like that. Wembley in the FA Cup final. Just a brilliant player. Mm. Come from Dumbarton, you know, minimal outlay. Turned into a fantastic player, you know, and there were times when Everton were unsure whether he was going to. But went on and, and was for 10 years, whatever, was, was fantastic for Everton. Absolutely second to none um, and was key in, into why we won what we won mm. still at the club now he's now the international ambassador as well and just a brilliant footballer and a brilliant Everton number nine we love our number nine he's mm. a proper Everton yeah. number nine he was what you think of it we, we got a shirt over there of Duncan Ferguson who we both love you know and loved him as an Everton player but sorry Duncan Graham yeah. Sharp is the Scottish pick and mm. 
And that's, you know, we talk about Kale for people always their idol. Dunk, Dunk's like one of my favourite mm-hmm. Everton players, but he's not got in because there, no. was, there was something better and Sharp was for Everton. And it's the way it is. You know, Dunk was great and played his part in Everton winning a trophy, but Sharp won leagues mm. and, and was there for a long time. All, you know, was, was just better representation, I think. So that's why Sharp's got in for me. Yeah. Definitely, I'm, I'm the same. And, um, he was again. He was one of my first picks. It was just like I thought about the Scottish playing. You like you just said, Duncan. He's an idol, but at the same time, he's not. He can't go older anything near. What no. Graham Sharp really no. did, and you could mention, you know, Andy Gray. Obviously, a couple Loved of that. years. Andy was Gray a, was one I thought about. And for a couple of years, was a huge, huge, yeah. um, you know, and it, you know, but listen, Sharp was a better. Player. Alec Cleland for the Scottish player. Richard Goff. We've got it. Well, you know what? Richard Goff was in my notable thing because he's <laughs> still one of the best centre backs yeah. I've seen play for Everton for two years. He was unbelievable, mm. unbelievable. At thirty-eight, he was unbelievable. Up against Michael Owen, who was in his pomp, never scored a derby goal past him, and get away from him mm. just because of the intelligence of dropping in and not giving space. Unbelievable, but you no know, sharp was a. You know, I, know I, I thought I didn't know whether you were going to go for Fraser Hornby to be honest. Well, no, Gary Naismith was close. Well, Naismith and Stephen yeah, Naismith. Stephen Naismith. Oh. Funny in it both. It is same right. Name. Last one. one was lovely and one was a shaker. Last one. I think we both are going for the same player. It is. Enet Valencia for me. Right, three, two, one. Mm-hmm. Lukaku. It had to be, didn't it? Yeah. It had to be. It had to be Lukaku. Um, most goals in the Premier League era for Everton. Well, again, a world class centre forward. Okay, we didn't buy him as a world class centre mm-hmm. forward, but by the time he was leaving, he was a world class centre forward, and obviously that's one of the reasons why he left. Um, just mm-hmm. phenomenal, just a phenomenal footballer. It's mad though because I don't think he's improved since he left. No, I don't think he has improved. I think because he, he got himself to a level. I don't know whether he was world class. I still don't think he's well, but it depends how you gauge that. But he was, a, he was definitely a, a top level. Centre forward goals second to none, given the chance mm. to score goals, and it's the classic thing I think with with Rom is that one of them things of oh yeah I'm going on to bigger and better things, but you were as good as you were because mm. of where you were. The club were you know he thought the club wasn't big enough for him, but mm. the club was perfect size for him because he's that character. Sometimes you have to look at characters and go, you just shoot that club, anything bigger you get swallowed up. Because I don't think he's like a Messi or a Ronaldo. He's a good goal scorer and centre forward. Mm. He's got some decent ability. Everton, he was almost like, I'll carry the club on my shoulders then, and that suited him. Do you know what I mean? He mm. got the best out of him. He's kind of been swallowed at United. Mm. And he's gone to, he's been really good for Inter this year, he really has, but then Inter. Yeah. Oh, he loves you know. he loves being a he loves being a big fish. He's like the main man, isn't But he? when he's at a club where suddenly, like you've just said, Paul Pogba was the big man, mm. and and that took, and it's Manchester United, and that took the spotlight away from him. And mm. listen, he was phenomenal for us. Goals, he scored he? goals, and he's left footed. You know when he so you're sharp right and left. When he um, when he came in that first season, he just hit the ground straight away. And you know when we. When we bought him again, it was like that thing of like oh my God. when we got like in Chelsea, it was like that thing we're actually signing this yeah. world class player, we're putting the money out 30 million. Oh my god, mm. breaking the bank. And um, he turned up, he turned up, and again, it's just you I know, mean, he, he didn't turn up in the very big games, that's the problem. He did but sometimes, he did, and he did when sometimes. When was his thing, he, he really? moan about winning stuff, and then you, you get presented with all of those chances in the semi final, and you could if he'd have been at a normal game. Like we were used to, we didn't want one like that. That game, three one, three nil, three one, whatever against United, because he had that many mm-hmm. chances and he missed a penalty. And if he would have produced what he normally did, he would have sent us to Wembley. Then he would have play Palace yeah. and beat Palace at Wembley. We'd have had the cup, and who knows what would have happened. But he did turn up in the fact that he hit nearly twenty goals every year, mm-hmm. and that's incredible. Given that we had a manager who didn't care about defending, mm-hmm. you know, we had a twenty twenty to twenty five goal a season centre forward. And we finished eleventh twice mm. on the run, which is just it's unheard of. Because if you get a bit of organisation, you've got him. You're in the top five. Yeah, you know, and that's what Tottenham did. Well, like, listen, when people go on about Martinez, this is why it winds me up. Mm. They go on, oh, he's great, and all. He wasn't. He, he, we had the pieces in place. Now, okay, he might have been part of getting them in place because he did. I mean, mm. I don't know whether we'd have got Lukaku without him or kept him. I don't know, but. We had someone who could get us where we wanted to be, and yet he just didn't have a clue how to solve the other bit. Mm. And Ron would have been remembered as a much more um, 
with much more fondness. Who knows, he might have still been here. If we'd have had Carlo Ancelotti or David mm-hmm. Moyes or something and Romelu Koeman, if he'd have stayed, uh, if Ron would have stayed, Everton probably would have been in the yeah. year and then he would have been doing what he wanted to do for Everton and mm-hmm. Brewster's because Machiri come in. We'd have been buying these other shiny things. He'd have probably been made up mm-hmm. and, and his goals would have carried us and people forget that. We... We mm-hmm. didn't. We didn't have him. We had him for a year with Machiri, but because of the likes of Martinez, he done done all the, the promises we said to him and all the hard work. But as a as a goal scorer, unbelievable, and in that team, just fantastic. I I, I just thought he was a great player, and sometimes, listen, sometimes you have to forgive the sins of some mm-hmm. players because what they do on the what they do ultimately on the pitch is all that matters, and. Mm-hmm. People said he didn't work hard enough, or or whatever. Which he didn't. But did again, Gary Lineker work hard enough? Yeah, did work hard, Lineker. Did he work hard to put the ball in the back of the well, net? The problem, no, no, because he had the two of them. The, the the difference is, right? The difference is the the system. Mm. That, that's what I'm saying. So if Romelu Lukaku was playing for Everton now with Dom, you wouldn't. He all he'd have to do is go and split the centre back and the full back, mm. and just work that space, and he'd be fine. He was okay at doing that. And then you'd have Don doing the other stuff, so you wouldn't think about it because you wouldn't mm. need to. But when it was him and we were four, five, one, which mm. we were, it, it was quite obvious that there was times when he worked, put it this way: when he worked hard, you could see that he was yeah. a world class centre forward. Stoke at home, we lost four three. The best performance I ever seen from him mm. in an Everton shirt. He was unbelievable. He was bullying them. He was everywhere. He was putting tackles in. He scored two brilliant goals, mm. and we lost the game because Sopshay didn't know how to defend. Yeah. And we had Dickhead doing groups and giving penalties away at the end. But that John, kind of John Stones, you mean? Yeah. But that kind of thing. What I mean is, when Rom done yeah. that, Chelsea at home in the FA Cup, when he just went, "I'm winning this," and he turned up and they couldn't get near him. He scored two. He bullied them on his own. There wasn't enough of that, and I think that's why people were frustrated yeah, with him yeah. because when yeah. he did it, you, he was unplayable. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't get near him, and yeah. But that, but it doesn't take it away. He was, he was an incredible goal yeah. scorer for Everton. We got more than our value for money out of him. He's incredible, brilliant. Play. and I'd have him play. back tomorrow. I don't, and he's another one I don't love, but I would have him back because okay. his ability yeah. overrules everything. I'd else. have him back. Some players who. So I, come on, give me your, give me a note. I haven't done so, this, but let me. Okay, I'm, no, but the, the subs I had was Pina, Kayle, who we talked about, Landon Donovan. He was my American pick. Interesting, because he's a good player. Manuel Fernandez. Portuguese, he was one of us flipping, but didn't have him for long. But as a footballer, talent wise, outstanding. You'd have him over Andre Gomez as your Portuguese. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's I mean, Gomez, I think, I hope, mm-hmm. will overtake him, but Fernandez was Yeah, he was a fantastic footballer. Um, Limpa. Yeah, I was thinking of Limpa. Wonderful, wonderful I mean, footballer. T- toss up between him and Toby Slindroff. Well, there was it, and obviously, yes, with Bloomquist. Hey, it's unbelievable. The yak, I know. And I was desperate. The yak was going to be in my team, and then it was just Lukaku. I thought you keep him, Lukaku up front. Nah, <laughs> no way. <laughs> to be again, fighting over who'd score the goal. Uh, trying to thingy Brian Oviedo. Just because no, 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 he's no, in the no, he's no, in the absences. No, 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 he's in the absences. No, no stop it. But no. then the absences were like Stephen Stevens, wonderful. Sheedy, obviously Baines, Howard, Andy Gray, Gary Lineker. Adrian Heath you're just naming pl- good players here good play- Nuno Valente who you loved hey Nuno was amazing Wayne Rooney yeah. neither of us picked English, English player one of the greatest English players ever top goal scorer didn't get in Beardsley incredible Garner but he would have been on mm-hmm. the bench Olivier Decor the Frenchman wonderful player mm-hmm. we've seen how good he can be on road to glory <laughs> Richard Goff Marouane Fellaini yeah um, Nigel Martin. You're just naming international players now. No, but I'm saying they all played for us. Fan and now Nigel Martin. People like that. And I, I, had, I did have Anna Valencia, like a piss take. But there's so many mm. that there has been good players. But one, when you look at that, Widinski, Thomas Radzinski. You could have snuck him in because Canadian, Canadian. But he's born in Poland, mm. of course. Poznan. Um, Bart's here. So there was there's players who yeah. you look at and go, you know, Espen Bardson was the one who, who really was a, you know, do we put him in? Don't mm. we? Um, yeah, lots of good players. Great conversation. It is because conversation. people will come up with different yeah, things, and they will. Predominantly, obviously, there's a lot of good English players we've had yeah. and seen, who, and you've got to pick one of them. And I just thought for going back to the likes of Gary Stevens, yeah. who would have made a massive difference. Yeah. He's brilliant, best yeah. English life back. Baines, wonderful, but none of them put the impact on a team as what Peter Reid would, which is why Reid was my English yeah. pick. So 
the set for me, looking at the centre backs are maybe a little bit iffy mm. because this than I love, but yeah. then I couldn't squeeze. So they're in for a reason. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where other people are going, what them two, but they're in for a reason. Brilliant. There so, you go. It was good. Let, let us good. know your thoughts. Who was your who would make your best Everton in the international level eleven? Don't forget, only one one player per nationality mm. in the team. Who do you think would win? My team or Peds? Yeah. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Keep the questions coming in. We need we need it for the content. Me too. That was great. Yeah. See you later. See you later.